Hey, Dr. Nels here. Welcome to episode eight of Coffee with Nels. Hopefully you have been enjoying the series. The penultimate episode ran yesterday showing how to walk through the knowledge reduced in a Google collab notebook. Now today in the ultimate episode, we'll try to work on converting that into a package that you could use. Obvi you know, Google Collab is not a production ready <laughs> environment. Great place to walk through code, great place to kind of explain what's happening, but you gotta kind of start to switch over. So that's where we're at. Let's flip over here to the next segment. All right, you'll notice here the video didn't come in and out this time. I got it fixed, so uh, it just shows up. All right. So the Coffee with Nels, you'll see here, seven episodes going strong. Those are uploaded. And on Friday, tomorrow, we'll see the 95th episode of The Lindahl Letter. So moving right along. All right. Where are we going today? We're going to go over into GitHub. We're looking at my GitHub. I turned on a feature here that I was kind of excited about. That's the activity overview. Uh, it shows people whether your code efforts are in review, commit, poll, or issue. And you can see here I'm 99% commits, 1% issues. So um, yeehaw on that one. <laughs> uh, so that's good. We're going to go over into the knowledge reduce notebook. We're going to go take a real quick look here at what we reviewed yesterday in notebook 13. So. You can see here the icons fixed for the open and collab. That's good. <laughs> sometimes it breaks, sometimes it works. All right, so we'll connect here to the runtime. Now, this notebook, when it was run yesterday and we were taking a look at it, we didn't really stop and call out the parts that you might wanna separate back out. You'll notice here that we were importing and defining two classes, the reliability rating and the knowledge graph. Now, there are other elements from this code set that we might want to take and do something with in a more robust, more industrial sort of way. So you might want to convert out this class knowledge graph into a .py file that you can run whenever you want instead of running it as part of a Jupyter Notebook collab type environment or type setup. So the elements here that are interesting, obviously the reliability rating class is very small, right? Just four lines of code. Important, but just four lines of code. The knowledge graph here you're gonna to start to see some different components and how this ends up getting rated. And you're gonna see some stuff, right? We wanna be able to calculate quality score, add facts. You need to be able to figure out what the score itself contains. So reliability, quality, source, author, publication, URL. And then you're gonna to need to update that quality score and then you're gonna to need to be able to get the fact. So if you wanna break out some of these larger code components and have them be able to run in a different way, that's where we start getting over into the next notebook in the series. You can see here, here's another block of good code. You can see here the facts as they're extracted. And then if you remember, we were at 310 facts and then we were going to run some additional cleaning and this super aggressive cleaning here is actually still running. We kicked it off here when the, we started. <clears throat> Should be done here in just a second. All right, so the super aggressive cleaning pulled it down to just 37 facts, but maybe you want to be able to grab this 
super aggressive cleaning and run it over and over again or be able to pull it into different things. So that's where you would start to want to work in this other way. All right, here we go. So here in the same knowledge reduce repository, you'll now see this extra notebook. It'll be called uh, Knowledge Graph Package Build Version 4. Don't worry about the first three versions. <laughs> we just kind of skipped them and uh, jumped to this working uh, version four. So you'll see here it's a seven step notebook. We'll go ahead here real quick and run all these cells. Give it just a second here. All right, so step one, we're gonna set some package structure. We're gonna initialize some Python files. Right now, I'm just initializing two files. I'm just initializing the knowledge graph part and the test suite part that you would use to configure and make sure that it works. So I'm only doing those two. This notebook will need to be expanded to have five or six different Python files for those different code snippets. And then over time here, what we'll do is be able to run those snippets, get them from a repository and do the same work that we did in notebook 13. But we'll be able to do it in just a couple lines of code. That's what we're kind of working toward. So you can see here the notebook 13 is that big 12 step method of how to go about running this and then here in this new set of notebooks we're working on how to sort of industrialize that so you got your proof of concept it's showing you what to do and then once you can verify that it's possible then you want to obviously figure out how to do it and run it over and over again harden it make it a better thing to run so all right we'll flip over here to the collab version and we'll go here to step one. See here it ran in zero seconds. So this here is just gonna create some main package directories and subdirectories. So we're gonna create the package and we're gonna create the tests. All right, this one here again, right now we're just doing the core file to import knowledge graph. We're not importing all those other steps yet. I haven't built those into the notebook. All right. And keep in mind, as we enter episode eight here of Coffee with Nels, you have caught up with me in where I'm at in my building. So, yay. <laughs> All right, the core module with schema, this is the core module here. You can see it will write this file. If you're wondering what that means, over here, you can see that we're starting to work and write these files. You can see the core.py. It was written from this set of code here. So it's right there. We wrote a test module. You can see here it's a pretty intense test to be able to call and run that while you test your module, helping people out, just making sure they have some test cases ready if they choose to try to develop from this code. Then this here, step three, is gonna create your readme setup and license file. And then <clears throat> I think this is exciting <laughs> as we move forward. Eventually you needed that readme, you need that license. Step four here, we're gonna make a zip package. So it'll take all those files and zip them up if you need to take them somewhere. I have a code here to trigger the download. I have it commented out. Um, you may or may not want somebody causing a download on your system. So comment it out for safety. All right, so I then started working with the process of making a Git repository. So that's what we're working toward, right? We wanna take that code that was shared in the version 13 notebook, make it production ready, and then make it into a repository that somebody could get. And then for fun, in step seven, we're actually downloading the repo uh, from GitHub, downloading my full repo. So eventually what'll happen is we'll be able to run the download this repo step first, and then 
will just run a couple different commands to execute. And instead of being a 13 step notebook, we'll be able to do it in just a couple lines of Python. And that'll make it more extensible if you wanna grab different websites, if you wanna do different sorts of things with this code, so. Hopefully that's making sense to you. This has been episode eight, the ultimate episode of Coffee with Nels as we start to transition from proof of concept into getting it ready for production, getting it ready to be a repo and walking down that road. So we'll keep taking more steps along the way. Thanks for being here and I hope you have a fun and fantastic day.